Right, so... I looked it up a little bit. Apparently, like, it's, it is actually somewhat of a common problem, um, with this flight stick, that, um, Flight Simulator X sort of does some weird stuff with it, which is a bit weird. I'll, I'll um, I'll look into, like, fixing it, like, later on, or something. It doesn't really seem to be too much of an issue, except for, like, on the runway. I was saying, um, so there's all the costs of, um, like actually getting your license, which is a bit of a hefty price to pay. And then there is, once you have the license, the costs of flying and all that, which one could either rent a plane or buy, purchase their own airplane. And apparently, like I was reading about like the costs of um, both, and I'm not really quite sure what would be preferred. Um, there, because it seems that renting a plane could be like, for I guess like a more sort of advanced plane, could cost you up to like three hundred dollars an hour but I believe that's only for like the amount of time that the engine's on well fly I think there's a, there's a, a runway on that island right there and then like purchasing an airplane I think like at the cheapest really for like a, I guess like a decent sort of if you're gonna go used cause like a new airplane would probably be like well into the hundreds of thousands but like a used plane could, would probably be like at the cheapest a used decent plane would be like fifty thousand dollars which I guess really when you when it comes down to it isn't much different from like a lot of cars So it's sort of a weird predicament because it is something that I honestly am sort of interested in. But that type of money right now is a bit daunting and a, is a bit of a huge barrier to entry. See the runway, yep. And when it comes down to it, I think like underneath um, a private pilot's license, there are recreational and sport pilot's license, which um basically enable you to fly a plane though under like pretty heavy restrictions such as um not being able to go like a certain distance from your um the airport where you started at and stuff like that whereas a private pilot can kind of go anywhere like as long as you're not like going into like a certain class of airspace or something like I think like you can't go go above if you don't have an instrument rating I think like you can't go above um 18,000 feet which is pretty darn high so I'm not really sure why you would really need to go go that high but I imagine that actually might maybe it's like the highest sort of cause I'm just thinking I think that might be like median 18,000 feet median sea level so okay I was, I was thinking like for people like let's say like you're from like Denver Colorado or something which I'm pretty sure is like 5,000 feet above sea level I think that would still you'll be able to like fly like 13,000 feet in the air which is pretty darn high I'm 
For me personally, I don't really have too much of an interest in just like flying like recreationally. Like um For me, it's just sort of a notion of getting places fast and um traveling and stuff because when you're driving, you don't really ever feel like no matter how how long of a drive it is, you never really feel like you're going anywhere. If that makes sense, because like you're always on the road, like you don't you're never really you you don't have any um. There's no dead reckoning, I guess. Like you're not actually like looking at stuff. Um, what am I, like you're not looking at like uh land landmarks to like sort of base your location off of you're just like following street signs and all that whereas in the air like you're sort of come become king of the world almost and just how it just becomes sort of obvious I guess how massive and at the same time, how small the world really is. Uh, I'm freaking, I've been failing these landings. Like, I should be way lined up, but I'm not. And I'm still pretty, pretty darn high. Hopefully I don't freaking spin out of control again. But, uh, okay, let's... Like I was on some forum, and I read about some guy that, uh, like he got his light, well it was a way or too early flare, so just... <laughs> I kind of like thudded in a way that I'm not sure if I should have. I just tried to take off again without stopping. Is that water? Okay, we're on the runway though, so we should be good. I read about a fella that, um, oh I think I had stuck the brakes on, what am I doing? Like, he got his license, and, um, first thing he did was just, like, fly to the next town and get coffee. Like, I guess it's just, like, sort of, I would just sort of associate it with just an overwhelming freedom to sort of just go anywhere and sort of do anything. I guess. Okay, I'm gonna hit, um, seems that there's a pretty big runway over there, I think. And I like to believe that um, all the flight simulator, flight, flight simming I've done has sort of, I don't want to say prepared me to be able to like fly a plane, but I would, uh, I like to believe that it's somewhat loosened me up, I guess, to where s certain mechanics I might understand a little bit easier or more quickly than if I ha had never actually messed with Flight Simulator. Like, um, sort of the general arrangement of a cockpit, how to use, um, a Garmin 1000, um, all that stuff. How to flare and all that. I think, um, like I was reading about uh, some stuff and <laughs> that's a pretty um, specific statement. I was reading about some stuff. I think um, a lot of people were, were, they were saying that um, 
a flight simulator can sort of make you over rely on your instruments like um apparently like when you're actually taking flight lessons in the beginning there's they sort of like urge you to not really pay attention to your um instruments that much and just kind of just get a feel of the air or something I'm not really sure if that's accurate or at all But it's nice. It's it's really nice. I'm gonna try to um come in now. And there's a lot of stuff that you can't really simulate that well. Um just like the actual like feel of like being in a plane and stuff like um flight simulator here like it's got wind and stuff I believe but um generally you're not gonna be like understanding like what it actually means to like have heavy turbulence and stuff So, you know, this airport is actually, this runway, I think it's an airport, actually, because it's got all the, um, hangars, I think, and, and a taxiway. Actually, let me, um, try to, uh, I'm going to pass it and, um, come back around. See, so it's got those lights that, uh, will indicate to me if I'm too high and all that, which I'm very high to land at this point. I think they might not only be on that side though, so let's actually come back around and uh, approach it from um, approach from the north. And then I'm pretty sure, like, once you, if I was to own an airplane, the actual upkeep can like come to like seven thousand dollars a year for like a hangar, um, maintenance fuel and all that so I would say like it's a fairly expensive um it would be an expensive endeavor when it comes down to it but also I think a fairly sort of enjoy enjoyable one And it could come in handy, I think, in some scenarios where, like, a sudden business trip comes up. Like, you don't really need, you don't need to, like, book an airplane ticket all of a sudden. You don't have to, like, wait, like, two hours in an, in an airport. Just, like, drive one down to, the, to like, your, uh, wherever you have your airplane app. Open up, like, a flight plan and just get going. And I guess, like, I should probably say at this point, like, um, I've never actually, I, I, I have not been on an airplane, like, ever. So, like, I actually have, like, really no, um, actual experience with, um, with, with what it would be like. But it's sort of one of those things that you just feel sort of drawn to, I guess. Right now. Let's um, throttle down a little bit. And try to come in here now. 
Try to come in according to, to the lights. There seems to be like three types of people. Because I've um, watched like a good number of um, airline videos and stuff of like airline pilots like landing in various places. There seems to be three types of people who comment on those videos. Group type number one is um, the people who are like really stoked for the pilots being like, oh man, nice landing, nice, dude, nice. Type number two, people who are completely unsatisfied. Okay, let's, um, we want to keep it red and blue. Type number two, people who are completely unsatisfied. Like, oh my god, you didn't even flare correctly. You didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't follow the lights. You, way too high landing. Oh my god, terrible pilot. I, oh my god. And then type number three is the people who, um, complain at type number two for, um, basically just getting all of their f flight knowledge from flight simulators. So, like, I guess, like, while these lights are sort of made to, um, be, uh, Like, they're a good thing to, like, stick to and stuff like that, and, um, they give, like, a good idea of, um, how you're coming into your glide slope. They are not necessarily the be-all, the be end-all, and just because I am red, red, does not mean that I am going to crash. Oh, uh, I freaking... Because normally, what I do is I just, like, I set waypoints up, so I, I've, like, I make sure that I am, um, lined up as I can be. Oh god, this is fa fail. Absolute fail. Absolute fail. I've actually got a ton of videos up on my channel of um landings in various places. Oh my god, why am I... I need to fix this rudder problem very badly. Like, I've got videos of me landing in, like, various places, but they're all unlisted, because, um, I didn't really think people would, would care too much, and I just was sort of sharing stuff with friends.